Hello there everyone, in this video, I'll talk about Ebola virus disease, formerly known as Ebola hemorrhagic fever, which is a rare and fatal disease in humans and non-human primates like gorillas, monkeys, and chimpanzees. Ebola is caused by a virus from the group of viral hemorrhagic fever viruses. Other viruses from this group include Marburg virus, dengue fever, Lassa fever, and yellow fever. There are many different strains of Ebola virus that have been identified, but four species have been known to cause the disease in humans. They have been named after where they were discovered, and they include Ebola virus, Bundabugio virus, Thai forest virus, and Sudan virus. Now let's look at the epidemiology of Ebola virus. Ebola virus was first discovered in 1976 in two simultaneous outbreaks, one in what is now Nzara, South Sudan, and the other in Yambuku in Democratic Republic of Congo near the Ebola River, from which the disease takes its name. Since then, the virus has been infecting people from time to time leading to outbreaks in several African countries. Ebola virus has a very high mortality rate. The case fatality rate is between 20% and 90% depending on the virus species. Zaire Ebola virus species has the highest mortality rate that ranges from 60% to 90%. How is Ebola virus transmitted? It spreads to people by contact with the skin or bodily fluids of an infected animal, like a monkey, chimpanzee, or fruit bat. Human-to-human -human transmission occurs via direct contact with blood and secretions, or by contact with blood and secretions that remain on clothing, and also by needles, or syringes or other medical supplies used to treat Ebola-infected patients. In pregnant women, the virus may be transmitted from mother to baby in utero, during delivery, or through contact with maternal body fluids after birth, and also it can be transmitted through breast milk. Ebola is not spread through air, water, or insects like mosquitoes. Again, it cannot be transmitted from newly infected people who are not yet showing any symptoms. What are the symptoms of Ebola? The incubation period, that is, the time interval from infection with the virus to onset of symptoms, is from 2 to 21 days, typically in 8 to 10 days. Initially, the symptoms of Ebola are dry symptoms. This often begins with a sudden onset of fever, weakness, muscle pain, headache, and sore throat. This is followed by wet symptoms such as diarrhea and vomiting. Other symptoms are loss of appetite, abdominal pains, red eyes, skin rash, hiccups, chest pains, and difficulty breathing and swallowing. At a later stage, unexplained hemorrhaging, bleeding or bruising occurs. This usually causes bleeding from all body orifices. This includes bleeding from eyes, ears, nose and mouth, bleeding from the rectum, and eventually leading to shock and multi-organ failure. How is Ebola diagnosed? It can be challenging to identify Ebola virus disease right away after infection. This is because early signs of the disease, such as a fever, headache, and weakness, are not unique to an infection with the Ebola virus. They are frequently present in people who have malaria and typhoid fever, which are more common conditions. To determine a possible diagnosis of Ebola virus disease, there must be a combination of symptoms suggestive of Ebola and a possible exposure to Ebola virus within 21 days before the onset of symptoms. Confirmation that symptoms are caused by Ebola virus infection are made using the following diagnostic methods. Antibody capture enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. Antigen capture detection tests. Serum neutralization test. Reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction assay. Electron microscopy. Virus isolation by cell culture. How is Ebola treated? No cure exists, but a promising new vaccine and several still experimental treatments are bringing hope in the battle against this deadly disease. Generally, the treatment of Ebola is supportive which can significantly improve chances of survival, and this includes providing fluids and electrolytes orally or intravenously. Since patients lose so much fluid, keeping them hydrated is crucial to avoiding shock and other severe consequences. Using medication to support blood pressure, reduce vomiting and diarrhea, and to manage fever and pain. Additionally, psychological care is given to patients and their families to help them deal with a dreadful, serious illness, sometimes while also dealing with the illness or loss of other family members due to Ebola. In 2020, two monoclonal antibodies, that is, Inmazib and Abanga, were approved for the treatment of Zaire Ebola virus infection in adults and children by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, and treating other infections, if they occur. How are outbreaks prevented and controlled? Practice careful hygiene. Wash your hands with soap and water or an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Avoid contact with blood and body fluids. During outbreaks, healthcare workers and people caring for sick relatives are at high risk for developing Ebola because they are more likely to come into direct contact with body fluids. The proper use of personal protective equipment greatly reduces this risk. Care and isolation of patients to prevent further spread and save lives. Avoidance of contact with bats and non-human primates or blood, fluids, and raw meat prepared from these animals. 
avoidance of funeral or burial rituals that require handling the body of person who has died from Ebola. Do not handle items that may have come in contact with an infected person's blood or body fluids. This includes clothes, bedding, needles, and medical equipment. Contact tracing. To find and test anyone who had recent contact with a new Ebola patient. And importantly, community engagement and health promotion. To build community understanding of Ebola and participation in implementing necessary interventions. And that's all for this video. If this video has been helpful, be sure to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you for watching. Until next time.